Well, good day, plant people. Today, I wanted to bring you and show you some metal raised garden beds that I'm putting in my garden this year. And I want you to know that I just shot this entire video without my microphone on. So we're going to try a repeat. Before we do that, I wanted to show you this tulip because it is still going strong and it is a discount one that i got last year at that bulb sale and i think it's called like prism or something but it came in a single packet this was the only one that offered uh and it is gorgeous and i just kind of stuck it right here so it could receive some uh views as it was walk as i walked around the garden so let's talk about metal garden beds uh two years ago when i started my youtube channel i got searching for some good options for alternatives to wood because during the pandemic as you know wood prices soared uh, and i found this company called vigo and I purchased a, I think it was a two and a half by nine and a half configuration from them directly. And then I really liked it after I got it assembled and I asked if they had any type of affiliation program and they were a newer company just getting started out and they did happen to have an affiliation program and I was one of their first affiliates. So if you go back two years ago, uh, one of the first videos of Vigo on YouTube is from my channel. And I've been growing in that bed for two years now and it has done incredibly well. And I'm going to take you and show you what that bed looks like two years later and show you just how um, I had assembled that bed and how it is doing. Now, when it came time for this fall, or last fall, when I was wanting to tackle this vegetable garden product, I was like, well, should I purchase more Vigo garden beds? The quality had been pretty good, but as a YouTuber and someone who wants to show you various products, I got to looking at other options, uh, other competitors out there, and decided to go with a brand called Vigega, that I noticed over winter um, that also had very similar beds available. And I actually checked them out and actually purchased those beds on sale in March, I believe. And so I'm gonna take you and show you what those look like and we can compare them and contrast them together. Now in full disclosure, as I mentioned, I purchased all of my beds from Vigo. I purchased all of my beds from Vigega. Uh, I am affiliates of both of them now but this video is not sponsored and I'm not receiving any compensation to shoot this video. So my reviews of them are unbiased pretty much other than I am in their affiliation program. So if you buy through the links below, it won't increase the price of the products that you're paying, but it'll help me do future projects and plant more plants in the garden and I would really appreciate it. So this is a Vigo garden bed that I planted in this raised vegetable garden. Uh, I think it was last spring with the intention of adding some additional space to my vegetable garden. Now after adding this garden um, I decided that it was taking up too much space in this area and I decided to renovate the vegetable garden, tear out all of my wood beds because the configuration wasn't working for me any longer. So uh, I decided to go with 32 inch tall metal raised beds, which are these right here, uh, and a keyhole bed, which I love a keyhole bed because it's accessible from lots of different sides and allows you to grow a lot in a smaller amount of space, in my opinion. Now. These companies, there's also others, I think there's one called Forever Garden Beds, there's one called Ollie's that I also looked at. I believe they're all getting their beds from the same manufacturer. There are a few differences in some of them. For example, Vigo tends to do screws all the way to, up to the top, which provides good structural stability, but takes longer to assemble. And these screws and nuts and washers can be a pain as it is. Vigega does them kind of every, not every other one, but you can see here we've got uh, two, skip, one, skip, two, and this is 32 inch tall configuration. They're made of the exact same thickness of metal, which is really nice. And actually why I think these are all made at the same location is because of this paint color. When you look at them side by side, there are no visible differences in the paint color or the options that they provide. Now I've got gray. Uh, I don't have any other colors to show you from Vigega. The only other option I've gotten is when I first ordered my Vigo beds two years ago, 
white was one of the only options available. Uh, I think there's white and like a mint green. And so I chose white at that time. And then they came out with this gray color, which I really like. But even up to the rim, this is a rubber metal uh, metalized rim here that goes on the top to prevent you from cutting your hand uh, is exactly made of the same material here. You can see the finish is the same there. Now, what may be offered differently between these companies are configurations. So when I initially started looking at Vegega last fall, they had a, some fewer configurations than Vigo offered and actually some extra configurations that Vigo did not offer. Now, the, a lot of them are the same and there's still a few differences here and there. The one thing Vegega has added recently are accessories. Some of them there are the exact same accessories you can get from Vigo. Uh, some of them are not. So one of the things, I, these are all beds from the Giga, as I mentioned, the new ones. I have some Vigo Garden accessories that I ordered, and this is like a little toolbox that you can clip on that I put my Hori Hori in here. I will probably keep some tiny salt and pepper shakers in here for my tomatoes and tomato tie tape probably that's where i store these close to the garden so i can have snacks and tie up to my tomatoes as i need them i also got a worm bin from vigo uh, which i am really interested in trying this year if you have any recommendations on where to get earthworms let me know but i need to fill it up you throw in veggies in here uh, and then the earthworms travel in between these holes on the side here and then i will probably plant kale around it Vigo provided this nice little magnet here with it of things you can put in there and can you sh and things you shouldn't like plastic and metal and plastic bags and that type. But any of your kitchen um, uh, products can mostly go in there. So meat, you probably should not put a whole lot in there, for instance. I probably wouldn't put any in there. I would probably put these type of leftover vegetables from the garden or bad tomatoes that I found on the ground, dump those in there for earthworm food. So let's go take a look. Now that I've showed you that these look almost essentially the same, they're the same thickness, the quality is uh, exactly the same in my experience. Let's go take a look at the Vigo bed that I've been growing in for two years now. So this white bed is the Vigo bed. It was a 17 inch tall version. Uh, and I think it's nine and a half foot long. I think it was called their 10 and one when I purchased it. I think it's probably still called that now, but you can assemble them in multiple different configurations because they come in panels. This bed I set up with the Hugo culture method uh, two years ago, and I don't really like that method after trying it. So I'm going to be talking about how I'm setting up these new beds in the next video if you want to follow along for that and how I'd recommend setting them up. Now if your budget's an issue, Hugo culture might be a good method. But for me, because the soil has dropped so substantially over the past two years, and then in the center where I stack some of my um, logs that I had, I don't really have a good planting depth. I wouldn't recommend this method. There may be some tweaks and options that I could do in the future if I wanted to try that. But I had it in the budget this year just to fill them with soil completely, the new ones. And so I went that route so I could have complete planting depth, no deviation in uh, the bottom of the substance that I was planting in. That can sometimes cause some water issues. So this is it after two years though of growing in it. Now it gets really hot back here. Uh, you can see there's no visible signs of rust or anything on these beds. They look really good. Um, as I mentioned, really hot. And some people's concerns are, do these metal beds absorb heat really bad in the summer that which can affect the roots of your plants i have not personally experienced that um, in fact i have some blueberries planted in a vigo garden bed that i'll show you the tomatoes and things that i grow here i grew dahlias in this one the first year it was here and tomatoes last year all done really well in these beds i do have them on drip irrigation the blueberries and strawberry are the strawberries here you can see survived and came back from last year. So despite the winter we had, which got down to at least negative five with howling wind uh, this December uh, after Christmas and before New Year's, everything survived in here really well. You can see I planted some tulips just because I had this extra space back here last fall and those are looking really good too and will get pulled up after they start to fade in the coming weeks to put in my tomato plants as usual probably in this bed behind it i added this bed last year and took you along as i planted up some raspberries and some blackberries i think these are the blackberries i need to come through and cut back some of this 
dead wood, but you can see how the soil level has dropped significantly. Now this version, I did not use the Hugel culture method. I just put a potting soil blend in here. But as any with any raised bed, you're going to have to supplement it year after year because as these good organic matter breaks down, it obviously, obviously shrinks a little bit. You can see the comfrey residue that I have in here that I just kind of cut, chop and cut because there's a big plant right there and use it to, to kind of mulch in the summer to reserve some water and mulch in the fall um, as we're heading into winter for some extra protection. Now, a year and a half ago, I decided to move my blueberries, which I had previously planted in the ground, and they were struggling really bad. Uh, if you're not familiar, blueberries like acidic soil conditions. At my house, uh, our soil tends to be pretty alkaline, al alkaline uh, and they were defoliating really poorly. They weren't producing uh, really great fruit for me. Um, and I decided to pull those out of the ground and almost immediately after I planted them in this Vigo garden bed, they picked up significantly growing and now they are looking really, really healthy. You can see all the blooms on this one, how nice the foliage looks. There are several different varieties in this bed. On the ends here, uh, there's on both ends, there's a variety. There's two varieties kind of in the center and then a separate one in the center. And I think it, these are all bushel and ver, uh, berry varieties, by the way, if you're interested in looking at any of them. I like them because they stay pretty small. Uh, but this variety, I think, is called like pink lemonade or it's pink icing, I think is what it's called, actually. And it produces these gorgeous pink leaves in spring. And it's a nice centerpiece for this bed. And below it, I have planted strawberries, which survived the winter blast as well. So all of these blueberries survived really well in winter in this bed, along with the strawberries and some clematis that I planted in this bed in the fall to kind of mingle around and grow up the fence behind here. And you can actually see, I think this is the clematis starting to climb and come up right here now. Uh, it's hiding under these uh, strawberries that we're going to have some fruit on really nicely here soon. Now, just so you know, uh, when I was looking at getting new beds, it was kind of a trade-off for me. I was like, do I go with a company that I purchased from multiple times and have had pretty good success, or do I go with a new company? Uh, and I lean toward going with a new company just to uh, provide this content on YouTube to compare and contrast uh, a couple options for you. Now, as far as customer service goes from both companies, we'll start with Vigega. I ordered these beds at the beginning of March on sale. Um, I received an email to the two tall 32 inch beds got shipped almost immediately. I think I had them the next week. Um, and I ordered on the weekend and I actually had them the same week, I guess. So technically I ordered probably like on a Saturday and got them Wednesday. Uh, the keyhole bed took a little longer. I ordered on the website. It did say it was in stock, but they emailed me maybe, you know, a few days, maybe a week later and told me that, Hey, it was actually, they had run out of stock that they didn't have any of the gray configuration or gray color in stock and was wondering if I could accept another color uh, instead. And I told them, hey, it's my design, you know, I kind of want everything the same color. And so they said that was fine. Uh, it may just take a little longer. And then it, so it took a few more weeks for me to get the gray bed, but I wasn't in any particular hurry. I've never had a lot of experiences with Vigo's customer support uh, other than their marketing team and I will say that the marketing experiences that I had with them were lackluster. Uh, on multiple occasions, my affiliate program has stopped working. They've changed coupon codes. They've changed promotions on me, which has created some issues with viewers not being able to get discounts that I was told they could get uh, as one of the first affiliates they had. Uh, last year, I received an email from someone on the marketing team asking me to become an affiliate. And I'm like, I've been an affiliate for a year and a half, uh, and I've been growing in your beds for a year and a half. Why are you reaching out to me, asking me to be an affiliate? And uh, I just thought it was really funny because they transitioned uh, marketing um, affiliate programs during my time as an affiliate. A lot of things got messed up. Uh, it's just been an absolute nightmare. <laughs> 
or an affiliate, uh, but that's just an experience on the back end I've had. I have multiple experiences where I've emailed them asking for questions, don't get any answers, or they'll follow up for just a little bit, and then I will, it'll be end of story and I won't hear from them again. So I don't have any experience with the customer service specifically, but if the marketing team is any indication of the customer service, I would have concerns recommending purchasing from Vigo based on those experiences alone going forward. If you were to have an issue with the product and needed customer service. Um, so if I was purchasing beds today, which company would I choose? The cheapest, uh, whichever one is running a sale and feel free to mix and match um, products from the various companies. Like I mentioned, I think there's one called Forever Beds, which I'm not an affiliate of. Uh, Ollie's, I'm not an affiliate of because I've never purchased any of their stuff. But I will leave affiliate links below. So if you want to purchase from either of these places, uh, Vigo or Vegega, you can. And you can mix and match things like their accessories. Their trellis systems, I think, would probably work in between brands. Depends on the panel sizing, so that's something you would want to look into. But Vegega now offers those trellising systems for their products that are exactly the same as Vigo's. Now, one thing that I did use between the brands are the bracing rods. Um, so a little tip there, I ordered the 32 inch beds and they came with, I think, four total bracing rods. Um, and because I bought extension panels for one of the uh, 32 inch beds to make it a little longer, I needed extra bracing rods. And so I bought those actually from Vigo and I ordered the correct ones and they worked perfectly. Uh, because they were like half the price that they were from Vegega. So like I mentioned, order whatever is cheapest and whatever you can afford if you're interested uh, in either of these systems. The Vegega beds, I am able to offer you a coupon below because they offer their affiliates a coupon. Vigo no longer offers uh, coupons for their affiliates, which is a shame, but now they're in more locations like Lowe's and Home Depot, I think, so you can get them um, more broadly and they're not relying on affiliates anymore like they used to be. So if you're starting a new bed project, give consideration to metal beds. The estimated life on these beds are 20 years, but that's one of the reasons I chose these beds is because I wanted it to be the last beds that I have to put in this garden because my wood ones were already kind of wearing out and they were only four to five years old. And so if you want something that will last, think of metal. Uh, there are also great options like uh, concrete or cinder block. Um, that's not necessarily my style, doesn't mean it won't work for everyone. And the metal beds aren't necessarily cheap. Extruded aluminum uh, is really expensive in general these days. And so the fact that it'll last maybe four times as long potentially as a uh, wood bed provides those benefits when wood prices are also kind of expensive. I mentioned their trellising system. Um, I do really like the options for the trellises that these companies are providing now. That's a relatively new accessory within the past uh, at least year that they're offering. Uh, now they do not offer it on the large U-shaped bed. It tends to be a non-standard size. It's eight and a half foot wide instead of the standard eight foot that a lot of these configurations come in. So I will be going back to painted cattle panels or painted T-posts. I'm gonna paint them black and um, the cattle panel that I had in the vegetable garden already. I think you might be able to see right here is my um, gorilla cart and I have the actual black T-posts that I painted yesterday on there. Gotta get those put down in the raised bed and then I'm gonna attach the cattle panels to them. I think I'm gonna do a L configuration of cattle panels this time i want to grow i'll just take you up there and show you right quick i want to grow the dahlias um, on the back side near the walking uh, stone walking path as you come into the garden so we'll talk about configuration a little bit uh, previously as you know i had a bed here which i can show you a picture and then the keyhole bed was here and i had a kennel paddle going this way that was eight foot and one going this way that was eight foot and this cattle panel kind of blocked these plants from getting sun in the afternoon, which was okay because I tend to plant kale or some other uh, veggies that didn't need as much sun on this side. But I'd like to put the cattle panel here and grow the dahlias up it on this side. And that would allow some nice privacy this way 
also a great view coming into the garden through there. But I'm also thinking about putting a T-post right here and doing a short length of cattle panel this way and making a tiny ale to grow cucumbers up on. There'll be no tomatoes in this bed. Those are grown in the back behind the fence where I just showed you in the white Vigo bed. But all of this space will be open for um, different type of herbs that I plant in here. I do have some horseradish, which I'm thinking about adding back right here, but kale can go in here. I really love kale and Swiss chard. And so those are options to go around uh, these things as well, including this worm bin, I think. So uh, lots of things to think about. I do have just as much planting space, if not more, because these are deeper than the earth boxes were and give me a lot more planting space. I typically plant the peppers directly along um, the side of the house because they like the heat and then I stake them uh, and they grow you know up against the siding. One thing I would like in these beds but they do not make it yet is an L configuration in the 32 inch height. They do make an L configuration in the 17 inch height, but I wanted these uh, tall beds because of the neck issues I've been having. I didn't want to have to necessarily bend over. Um, and if I was replacing the earth boxes that were already kind of tall here, I didn't want to replace them with shorter beds that had a shorter growing depth. And so, I kind of butted these beds up together in the corner, as you can see. And in this hole here, I think I'm just going to get a piece of bigger PVC and paint it black. And I'm going to use it to store all of my plant supports uh, that I can put in there. And that'll be a nice storage location. So they're not currently strewn all about the vegetable garden, as you can see there. Uh, and they're in one nice location for me. And then we're going to come back through and obviously replant this with mini clover. You can see some of the mini clover is not so mini. Um, so the fact that I planted mini clover in here called Pipalina, um, I don't know that it's any better from my experience after growing it for a year than regular clover. Small clover, it does get kind of small here, but left untrimmed, which this hasn't and didn't get as much sun, it gets pretty big. So you can see how big those clovers are. So I think it's standard if it was getting full sun, uh, it would probably stay a little smaller, but the, the, less sun, more shady areas that has not been cut yet, definitely gets really large. In the next video, I'm going to be taking you around and showing you um, what I filled these beds with, how I'm going to be amending these beds to get started off on the right foot um, this coming spring with some great growing things and walk you along how I'm going to set up irrigation in these beds. I don't think irrigation will be the same part of the video that I'm going to be shooting next because I'm doing irrigation in these beds a little different than I have uh, previously. I got a few extra accessories that I'm going to set up here that I think will make it a little easier to control portions of the bed that need water versus some that may not. If that's not, uh, if I don't have anything planted in it, that way I'm not just running water to and wasting it. Uh, but we'll talk about that uh, in probably the next couple weeks because it'll be our last frost before long and I will get stuff start planting in here as soon as possible so I can move on to the ornamental things in my garden. I will be getting more plant mail uh, this week coming in so I'm going to be shooting some videos about those things because um, I'm really excited about them and I need to get to transplanting some things to make space for that plant mail. Uh, this video, since I shot it without the audio on first and had to reshoot it, I'm not going to get much done today because it's already getting kind of dark, as you can see, and cool because the sun's not out. So that's something I'll need to work on the rest of this week. But I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks for following along. And remember, in a world full of hate, be a light. Take care, everyone. Bye.